Welcome to the First Day in Me Church Manassas broadcast, where the Holy Spirit empowers us to come together in the spirit of unity, ready to work and willing to serve. With sound biblical teaching, prayer, and spiritual impartation, we know that souls will be saved, lives changed, relationships restored, and the community will be empowered by the power that works in us. So once again, welcome to the First Day in the Church Manassas broadcast. Be blessed. Yes, sir. 
why people think they're big, no but they ain't bigger than God. No your problems like ain't bigger than God. No God. Your job like ain't bigger than God. There's no God like Jehovah. Hey, come on. David said it. Elijah said it. It's time for you to say it. Come on. There's no God like Jehovah. No God like Jehovah. Say it. Come on. Take it there. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Nobody. Good morning, everyone. How about that choir? <laughs> Praise God. Giving all the honor and glory to God, our most humble and gracious Heavenly Father, the only one who sustains us, the only one who is omnipotent, the only one who is omniscient, omnipresent, and immutable. To Pastor Goggins, our wonderful leader who has encouraged us to reach, we thank God for our pastor and the many blessings. Thank you, Pastor Goggins, for inviting me to speak on this glorious Lay Witness Sunday. I don't take such an honor lightly. Thank you, Sister Retha, for that wonderful introduction. Thanks to all of you for your prayers. To the clergy, the trustees, and fellow members, I am so blessed to be here today. But for the grace of God, the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for molding us, for using us, for leading us. Please help us to walk humbly with you, Lord. Now, Father, I ask you to align my desires with yours as I speak today. Decrease me and increase your spirit and your will. Now, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. These and many other blessings I ask you and thank you for. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior's name. Amen. Amen. The scripture that the Lord placed in my heart for today comes from Proverbs 3rd chapter 5th through 6th verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. I'm here to witness about my faith in Jesus Christ and my commitment to fulfill his mission in this world. What are the deeds that many of us wish to do and still may have done? is to read the Bible. God's word is embedded in this Bible. I understand um, that if you're reading and understanding is not taking place, then of course reading is not taking place. Research consistently shares the re that reading is an active process of constructing meaning. Now keep in mind also that the Bible is not just a book to read. We are called to study it and to allow it to influence our lives. We must pray and ask God to help us to understand. Now I remember reading in John 16, 13, 
When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. He will show you things to come. I ask for your prayers on this subject. If reading the Bible is not influencing your life, hashtag pray and seek God's guidance. I came to witness to you today, and I wish to start by witnessing about reading the Bible, how reading the Bible has influenced my life. It started a long time ago. <laughs> my parents knew something that my sisters, brothers, and I did not know. They knew that we needed to read and understand the Bible. So I will share how my parents were led by the Lord to accomplish this goal. They would gather us all together to pray and study God's word they insisted that we take turns reading scriptures from the Bible, and then they would ask us to share what that particular scripture meant to us. And if we showed a lack of understanding, then they would give us a chance to share, and they'd ask around each one of us to share what we thought about it, and they were listening like vultures. Then they would explain to us what the scripture meant if they felt we did not understand. Finally, they would send us off to find the Bible verse to prepare to recite and share the meaning at the dinner table. Now, we did this quite often. Now, my parents each had their favorite Bible verse as well. After my father blessed the food, he would follow up with, Behold the man, the Son of God. And my mother would chime in with, God is love. Now, my mom's verse changed just a little bit when my siblings were married. We would all gather around the dinner table at holidays and special occasions, and she would blurt out this verse, Thou shalt not commit adultery. <laughs> uh, that was mom. <laughs> I know that this Bible verse sharing was not to be meant as competition with each other, but you know, kids, we were so competitive with each other, it was ridiculous. One of my older sisters would always have a long Bible verse, at least at that time when we were so young, I thought it to be uh, long. And she would explain it gracefully and with understanding. I would shout out, Jesus well, until. <laughs> One day, I decided to find a longer verse. I totally forgot, though, when I was, you know, researching this verse and looking it up and trying to make sure it was at least as long as my sister's. You know, I, I, I forgot that I needed to understand this verse. You see, I had a very serious habit of decoding words, my dear, of this active process of constructive meaning. Now, I could just decode every single word on the page, but the problem was, with this particular scripture, I did not pray for understanding before I chose that scripture, and uh, the scripture came from Proverbs 14, chapter 34th verse, and it said, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I had no clue to what righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people meant at that time. I did not even bat an eye to think about the meaning. Very necessary habit change needed here. I knew that I had read a Bible verse similar to the length of my older sister's favorite verse from John 8:32, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I was really into this length thing, wrong focus. Well, I decoded the words in my verse perfectly, but I could not explain it. Again, wrong focus. My parents shared the meaning with me as I struggled desperately to understand that verse. You see, I thought it was simply talking about our nation. Through my parents' explanation, I discovered that it was not targeting any specific nation, but its meanly, meaning clearly applied to all nations, including America. 
And we must also keep in mind in these make America great again times that we should ask ourselves, which of these causes will we embrace, righteousness or sin? I read in 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter, 7th verse, consider what I say, and the Lord will give you the understanding in all things. So ever since that day when I read my Bible verse, I thanked God for his word. I prayed for understanding before I attempted to read his word, and the Lord helped me to understand as I read his word. I read in 1 Peter 2nd chapter 2nd verse, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Remember, we are called to study the Bible and to allow it to influence our lives. Sometimes when we want something so badly that we can almost taste it, we tend to get sidetracked and try to take things into our own hands. We work hard and pray for something that is probably not really meant for us. The Bible clearly states in Jeremiah, first chapter, fifth verse, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. When we truly put our trust in God, he divinely intervenes. When I was seeking a position as an elementary school administrator, I just couldn't understand why I would always freeze and be filled with so much stress and anxiety when I would, you know, go for these interviews for the position that I desired. I've had the opportunity to sit on panels where I've actually participated in interviewing candidates for administrative positions. So I just could not figure this out. But during my interview, I promised I would be so nervous I could not even think straight. I remember times when I was so nervous during the interview that I could not even understand the question they were asking. My mind was totally removed from it. The problem was, I was leaning on my own understanding about my path. So finally, one day I thought to myself, huh, I have a master's degree in administration and supervision. I have a wealth of knowledge about this job. But you know what? Maybe this is not what God has for me to do because it's not working. Even after this pious thought, I still interview for administrators' positions. God allowed me to serve as summer school principal and to take a few other jobs in administration here and there for short periods of time, but he was trying to tell me some things are not meant for me. Before I was formed in the womb, God knew me. Before I was born, he set me apart. Bear with me as I witness to you about how God worked with me during this endeavor. Now, one of the things I absolutely love to do is walk in the mall. And to tell you the truth, I've come up with some great ideas while walking in the mall. It's very relaxing to me. So this one time while I was walking in the mall, I passed by a booth where the most interesting items were for sale. I generally don't stop at these boots, but this time there was this compelling force that lured me to a ceramic bust of an angel. And I, I just wanted to bring this in and share it with you today. This angel right here. Okay, this angel's hair was designed in the hairstyle, the same hairstyle as mine at that time. I was totally attracted to this item. So I inquired about the price, and I purchased it. Immediately following this late purchase, here's what transpired. Now here's this angel reading this book, and I'm assuming this book is the Bible. But when I saw it, I took it a totally different way. At the end of the school year in June, 
I received a call from my principal and he informed me that the successful our reading program was in need of an administrator. So he told me that that person had relocated and he asked me if I would accept that position. I nearly passed out. <laughs> but somehow I was able to keep my composure and I politely said, yes, I will be more than happy to be at men for the successful program. This was truly a divine intervention. I was now on the path to fulfilling God's divine purpose for my life and not leaning on my own understanding. You see, reading the Bible is so important. Psalms 32, 8 says that God promises to instruct us in the way we should go and to guide us with his eye upon us. So when God has something for us, guess what? It's ours. Remember, God knew us before we were formed in the womb. Before we were born, he set us apart. So I closed out the Success for All program at the end of the school year. But God was not done with me. I began working as a reading resource teacher in my school, and I was told that I needed a degree in reading if I wanted to be a reading specialist in the building. And I knew that this was my calling. God had been very clear, the bus, the successful all administrator, the reading resource teacher. Now listen to this. We only see the present, but God sees the beginning, the middle, and the end. So I knew I had to get that degree. It would be another master's, but it would be doing what God had in his plans for me. God had ordered my steps. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Water my steps in your word. Oh, please order my steps in your word. Now, Fairfax County Public Schools miraculously advertised a reading cohort through Shenandoah University. I applied and I was accepted. So I enrolled in that Master of Reading program. This worked out perfectly because I was convinced even more that this was what God had for me. After graduating from Shenandoah with impeccable grades, I knew that the next steps were to take that reading teacher's exam and pass it. Again, God intervened. I passed that test with flying colors and then I interviewed for a reading specialist position. The Lord did guide me with his eye up on me because that interview was the very first interview that I had and I got the job. Tell me, but for God. I want you to know that before nor during or after that interview was I afraid, like I, that, that fear that I had when I was interviewing for other positions, I didn't have it for this one. I experienced this peace as described in Philippians 4th chapter 7, 7th verse. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. God wanted me to teach others how to read. The first reading specialist position for which I interviewed was divinely guaranteed to be mine. I read in Psalm 16, chapter 11, verse, he guarantees to show you the path of life as you follow him. If only I had been in tune with the Lord earlier, but guess what? It's never too late. I kept looking straight ahead, Pastor Goggins. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, 
When I reflect on my life, I now know that the message was there all along. It was there when my parents were sharing that we needed to be able to show understanding when reading the word. I was learning how to be a reading specialist and didn't even know it. All I needed to do was to allow what I had read in the Bible to influence the decisions that I made. Remember, we are called to study the Bible and to allow it to influence our lives. We should always rely on his faultless wisdom and power because he will teach us that nothing, not a single thing, can touch our lives apart from his divine purpose. He molds us, he leads us, and he uses us to fulfill his purpose for us. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth, his truth, his truth endureth to all generations. When we pray before we read the word and read it with understanding, we learn so much about life, about what the good Lord has in store for us. So remember, we are called to study the Bible and allow it to influence our lives. In the words of Reverend Marita Williams, I have need of thee today. Some of you who have been here for quite some time might have had the opportunity to participate in Reverend Marita's Sunday school classes. Rest in peace, Reverend Marita. Well, she would give us a not to share question at the end of the lesson. Now, this was not just any old question. It was one that you really needed to, to ponder on and pray about and, and do more reading about and just, you know, let God guide you with your answer for that question. Well, today, I'm going to leave you with a not to share question. How has reading the Bible influenced your life? Timothy 4.13 says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. So now that I've retired, I continue to teach reading. So I ask, now what, Lord? Isaiah 6, 8 said, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Thank you for allowing me to witness to you today on this wonderful Lay Witness Sunday. Amen, amen, amen. That's all the time we have for today's broadcast. And we pray that you have truly been blessed. First AME Church Manassas is located at 10313 South Grand Avenue in Manassas, Virginia. And we encourage you to come by and visit at any time. Thursday night Bible study starts at 7 p.m. Sunday mornings at 8.30, we have church school classes for all age groups. And our dynamic worship service starts at 10 a.m. For more information, call 703-361-8791 or just visit us on the web at famechurch.com. Be blessed. Be blessed.